Hey guys, Mr. B here, and this video is going to be for the Law of Conservation of Mass Virtual Lab. So we're going to do this lab together. There's going to be some portions where you're going to be filling out your data table with some numbers, and then I will see you at the end for the post-lab questions. All right, let's get started. All right, so for the first part, we are going to measure and record the mass of the beaker empty. So we'll place it on our scale. And we see that the scale says 25.94 grams. So please record that in the mass of the beaker empty column of your data table. Next, we're going to add 15 milliliters of vinegar to our beaker and record the mass of the beaker and vinegar together. All right, so the scale says 40.51 grams, so please record that number on your data table in the beaker and vinegar column. All right, next we're going to add about 5 grams of baking soda onto our weighing paper here, and then we're going to record the exact mass of this. Even though we're going to get about 5, it might be a little bit more or under, so here we go. All right, so we have 4.99 grams, is about as close to 5 as we get, oh, or maybe 5.0 grams on the dot. So we're going to record that in our data table in the mass of baking soda used. Next, we're going to place the beaker and vinegar with our baking soda all on the scale here and see what the total mass is of everything. So here we go. Looks like we have 45.48 grams, so record that in the initial mass of our reactants column on our data table. Okay, we're going to carefully pour the baking soda into the beaker with the vinegar, allow the reaction to occur, and then we're going to record the mass of the products when the reaction is over. So let's add our baking soda in here. Give it also a bit of a swirl to make sure that all of it is reacting. So we don't have anything left over. Some of that baking soda likes to cake onto the side of the beaker here. Let's just get all of this to react. All right, so it looks like the fizzing has stopped. So at this point, we're going to put the beaker on the scale and record what the total mass of all the products are. All right, so putting it on the scale, it looks like the total mass of all of our products now is about 39.27 grams. So we're going to record that on our data table as the final mass of our products. All right, so this is now trial two of our lab. We're going to take an empty bottle. I just have a Gatorade bottle here. We're going to put it on the scale, and we are going to record what the mass of the bottle is empty. So it looks like we have about 45.12 grams. So please record that on your data table as the mass of the empty bottle. Next, we're going to add about 15 milliliters of vinegar to our bottle. And then we're going to record the mass of the bottle with the vinegar inside. So here we go. Let's add this in. And then we will put the cap back on too, so that way we don't have that mass that is missing. And it looks like now that our mass is 59.82 grams. So record that as the mass of the bottle and the vinegar in your data table. All right, so now we're going to add another 5 grams of baking soda onto our scale here. Um, and again, we're going to get about as close to 5 grams as we can, but it might not be exact. So we're going to have to record what the exact number is. But here we go. Let's add some on. All 
All right, so it looks like we have 5.01 grams. So for trial two in your data table, record that as the mass of the baking soda. Okay, so 5.01 grams. Now we're gonna add the bottle with the vinegar onto the scale with the baking soda and record the total mass of all the reactants before our reaction takes place here. So let's add the bottle on. All right, so it looks like our total mass here is 64.88 grams. So please record that in your data table as the initial mass of our reactants, 64.88 grams. All right, so now we're gonna tilt the bottle sideways and we're gonna to try to add our baking soda into the neck of the bottle, but without letting it drop into the actual um, vinegar itself. And we're gonna to try to put the cap on. So we're gonna to have to do this very carefully here. Um, you'd usually wanna do this with two people, but I am working by myself. So we're just gonna to have to see how uh, skilled I am. <laughs> so let's do our best to do this. Try not to lose any on the table either. All right, so it's about as best as we can get. So let's put the cap on here very carefully. And then we're going to tilt it upright and let the reaction go. So here we go. Let the reaction take place. We'll make note, by the way, that I did lose a little bit of baking soda on the table. So we do take our measurement here of our final products. Our mass is going to be a little bit lower than it should be simply because of the fact that I kind of messed up and lost some on the table, but that's how it goes. So shake this up, make sure this reaction goes to completion and then we will weigh it afterwards. All right, so our reaction is at completion. So now we're gonna put it on the scale and see what the total mass is of our products. All right, so it looks like the scale says our total mass is 63.62 grams. So please record that on your data table as the total mass of our products for trial number two. All right, now for trial number three, we are going to record the mass of an empty flask. So we have a 250 milliliter flask here. And we're gonna record what this weighs. So we have 122.31 grams. So please record that on your data table for trial number three as the mass of the empty flask. So now we're gonna add about 15 milliliters of vinegar into our flask and record what the mass of the flask and vinegar is. So it looks like we have 136.94 grams. So please record that in your data table as the mass, the mass of the flask and vinegar. All right, we're gonna add another five grams of baking soda onto our scale here. And then that is gonna get weighed. And we're gonna weigh that along with our flask and vinegar. We're also gonna have a balloon that we're gonna put over our flask. So we're gonna weigh that as well. And we're going to get what the total mass of all of our reactants are before we do our final reaction here. All right, so the mass of our baking soda here for trial number three is about 5.09 grams. Just to make sure you can see this properly, okay. About 5.09 grams. So there is the mass of our baking soda. You can record that on your data table. So now we're going to take the mass of our flask and vinegar, our baking soda, and our balloon and put all of them on the scale 
to see what our total mass is of our, all of our reactants. So let's see if we can add all this on as best as we can. And we'll have a, a balloon here, which I'm going to put on top of our flask just to uh, save ourselves some space on our scale because we're kind of running out of room here. All right, let's make sure all of our baking soda is on the scale. So we have 144.80 grams. So record that on your data table for trial number three as the total mass of our reactants. Okay, 144.80 grams. All right, so we're gonna pour our baking soda into our balloon as best as we can. I'm gonna hold it, I'm gonna try to hold it open. Very, very carefully, we'll pour it in there. Oh no! That's okay. I know. All right, we spilled some. We'll take note of that in our conclusion. If we have any errors, it's because of human error. That's okay. That's how it goes sometimes. All right, we're, we're recovering the lost baking soda that landed on the table. That way our numbers are as close as we can get them. All right, so final part here. We're going to add this balloon over the neck of our flask very carefully. And we're going to allow the baking soda to fall in and let the reaction take place. So here we go. And just for safekeeping, I'm going to hold this balloon with my fingers. Because as we see here, it's getting filled with gas. And I'm afraid that if I don't hold it, it's going to fly off our flask. And as we do this too, we are going to swirl our solution. Make sure that all of the baking soda is getting reacted with, with our vinegar. So that way, this reaction goes to completion. And then when we are done here, we're going to find the total mass of everything. And if the law of conservation of mass holds true, our mass before and after should be pretty close to the same. All right, so our reaction is probably about as done as we're going to get it. So we're going to put it on the scale and see what our mass is. All right, so we're going to zero our scale here. We're going to put everything on and see what our total mass is of all of our products. So the scale says 143.76 grams. So we're going to record that as the final mass of our products for trial number three, or 143.75. Hey guys, we are here now for the post lab. We should have now finished our virtual lab and have all of our data. So now we're gonna answer some of the analysis questions at the end of our lab. So I have my paper here in front of me. Hopefully you're looking at your handout. Um, let's go through these questions together. So number one, what evidence was there that a chemical reaction occurred? All right, so in this lab, the reaction that we saw was between baking soda and vinegar. And one of the key pieces of evidence to show that a chemical reaction took place was that we had a gas form. So you saw a lot of bubbles, right? A lot of bubbles coming out of the solution. And we started with a solid, the baking soda, and a liquid, which was the vinegar, and we produced a gas. And that is one of the key pieces of evidence that tell us that we had a chemical change take place. All right, taking a look at number two, how did the final mass of the products compare with the initial mass of the reactants for each trial? So if we take a look at our data and we look at the initial mass of the reactants compared to the initial mass of the products, um, in trial number one, there was quite a big change between the two. Um, and that was primarily because of the fact that we didn't cover the container. So the gas that we were producing was carbon dioxide gas. And a lot of it, of course, just escaped into the air or into the room and we didn't capture any of it. So when we put the beaker and the vinegar and everything on the scale again, that gas was now gone, so we lost quite a bit of mass. As for trial number two, that one was a lot closer. So it looks like our initial mass was maybe 64.88 grams, and our final mass of our products was about 63.62 grams. So we lost a little over a gram, about 1.2 grams of mass, which is very, very small if we think about it. And again, with that one, we had the reaction take place in a bottle. So the container was closed. Um, 
And, uh, and so we, we had a lot more of that gas trapped, in which case we had a little bit of mass change, but not by much. And in the third trial, we had a balloon that covered over our flask, and the reaction took place with the balloon over the mouth of the flask right from the beginning. Um, our initial mass was 144.80 grams, and our final mass was about 143.75. So that was a change of about 1.05 grams, so a little bit smaller than trial two. Um, and so that one, of course, had a much, much closer final mass of our products to our initial mass of our reactants. All right, question number two, letter B. If the law of conservation of mass was violated, justify your results. So in this lab, we certainly had a change in mass from reactants to products, right? Um, now in the first trial, it was very clear that we would have this change because we didn't capture any gas. However, in the second and third trials, we had some change in mass and maybe we shouldn't have had a change in mass at all, or at least very little. So we did have a change of about one gram for each of those. And I would say the biggest factor was that we lost some of the baking powder on the table. So if we go and look back at that video, you're gonna see that in trial number two, I accidentally dropped some of the baking soda onto the table and it didn't make it into the bottle, which is probably why we had a change in mass about a gram or a little over about 1.2 grams. And in the third trial, same thing, when we were putting the baking soda in the balloon, we dropped a little bit on the table. Now we did try to recover it, and we did recover some of it, but you can't recover all of it because it does stick to the table quite a bit. So unfortunately, I think the biggest reason why the law of conservation of mass was violated in this lab was because of just human error. Um, and that's a factor that we have to take into consideration for a lot of chemistry laboratories that we do because we're not perfect beings. So that's what I would say for number two, letter B. All right, number three, it says, indicate the state of matter for each reactant and product. So the state of matter for our baking soda and our vinegar was a solid and a liquid, right? So our baking soda, of course, was a solid powder and our vinegar was a liquid. As for the products that we produced, we produced carbon dioxide gas, that is, of course, a gas, so that is one of our products. Uh, and the other product that we made was water. Um, now, granted, you probably didn't realize water was made because vinegar is a clear liquid and water is a clear liquid. So you can't really tell the difference between them unless, of course, you're there in person, you can smell it. Um, so we had a solid and a liquid to begin with. We produced a gas, we produced a liquid, and technically, we also produced another solid in our product, but it was dissolved in water, and that was sodium carbonate, which is, is, is dissolved in water, so you couldn't tell it was there, but technically it was aqueous, which is a fancy word of saying dissolved in water, okay? But for this one, I would say reactants, solid, and liquid, products, gas, and liquid. All right, last question here, number four, how else could you have tested the law of conservation of matter for this reaction? What other experimental designs could you have implemented and explain your revised procedure? We could have tested the law of conservation of matter for this reaction in a lot of different ways. Um, and this one is kind of up to you to come up with for what you could have done differently. But, um, you know, we could, have, we could have changed the amount of baking soda that we put in there or the amount of vinegar we put in there. Uh, we could have tried it in different containers, um, all kinds of different things. Pretty much any answer you put here is going to be a fine one. Um, and it wouldn't even need to be for this reaction, too. We could have done all kinds of things. But regardless, the main thing is whatever we do, we want to make sure that we do it in a closed system or a closed environment. So probably in some kind of container that's, that's closed so that nothing can get in, nothing can get out and then we can measure everything beforehand and everything afterwards and really make sure that the law of conservation of matter is um, being obeyed. So, All right, guys, that is it for this lab. Thanks for staying with me. I hope that you learned something about law of conservation of mass. My name is Mr. B. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.